What's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. I am Chanel with Lizzie's Charm, and we are about to get into this Scorpio New Moon Eclipse energy to see all the things that it's going to be giving. Okay, so um, I offer a multitude of services if you are interested in seeing which services that work for you that I offer. Check out the website below, and yeah, you can go all through the things, multiple tarot readings, um, some self-help things, some self-led workbooks, okay, and some conjure things. So I hope that this energy has been good to you, that it has been very enlightening, right? Putting you in the space of something fresh, something lighter, right? Something new. And if not, know that this process, this movement, this flow that's taking place is cultivating that. It's bringing that. If you choose to be aware of what it is that you're needing to do for yourself, for your life, you know? So we, I'm going to do things a little bit differently, right? Because some stuff that I want to start adding into these divination videos and just, you know, open you guys up to a few different things in the event that you're not aware of them. And if you are, you may not even really understand how they go, what they mean, you know. So first, what we're going to talk about is um, the new moon itself and where that is when it comes to human design and connecting that with a divination system called I Ching. Okay, and then we're going to do a pick a card. So first of all, this new moon was in Scorpio. So both um, the sun and the moon has been in Scorpio. Venus was there as well. So a lot of things, these were all conjunct one another, but the moon has moved forward and will be in Sagittarius probably about the time you watch this video because I'm doing this the day after the actual moon okay so basically this really hit topic on our values our sense of self-worth you know what it is that we love and desire for our lives what we want in our relationships what we need for real in our relationships to thrive right our resources and connecting with that and um, what it is that that is looking like it was also in a a square to Pluto, which is in Capricorn, and Pluto is Scorpio's ruler. All right, so this these were working together, in a sense, right? In reference to seeing what structure is needing to be rebuilt, what needs to be torn down, what so that we can build back up. But it's just like the beginning, and this really puts us in a place of being able to prepare ourselves or get into the space of seeing through the darkness of things right because Scorpio is the underworld you know Scorpio is um, where things go to die right so that they can be reborn you know and new life can come in but in the process of that, things have to be learned. Scorpio is about the occult. It's about the esoteric knowledge, that which is hidden, right? So you, things can only revive itself when it recognizes what has been um, untouched, right? Learning why a thing has been the way it is, like the, the underpinnings of it, so that you it can be acknowledged and utilized in whichever way that it can, right? Maybe that's information, maybe that's feelings, maybe that's thoughts, right? Maybe there is some belief, some spiritual um, affiliation, right, that has been um, aligned to that's not working anymore, like in, in or just seeing something for what it really is, right? That's really what Scorpio is all about. Um, Scorpio is that one sign. I find that Scorpios be really scary, you know? Um, and I'm not saying that in a, an offensive way, but I don't know a, a Scorpio who is doesn't get spooked for real, you know? And I always find that so interesting because they rule all of those things. It's the season, it's the spooky season, okay? It is the things that are hidden in the dark. It's the underworld, right? It is um, the things that go bump at night, 
you know, and but withholding that energy that gives them the ability to really be the ones who can see in the dark, who can see what it is for what it really is. Right. What is it? So. Because not everyone has the same devotion that Scorpio has um, to really investigate and get down to the bottom of why something works the way it works, right? Um, Scorpios are really the detectives of the Zodiac. You know, they're going to ask all the questions that's needing to be asked, right? They can compare notes, all right? They're going to rule out what needs to be ruled out. This is like um, a very solidified, uh, we could say, Libra energy in a sense, because, you know, Libra is the justice. It's what makes the ruling. But Scorpio was the one who put the work in to um, present the information to the judge of why a thing happened the way it happened. Who was involved, all right, and what weapons were used, okay, and how it was done, right? Going just very deep in the reason why it's done. What what was the, what encouraged, what influenced it, right? Um, what, what made it happen the way it happened? Why a person was feeling in some kind of way, what they was thinking, what, um, they were exposed to at a certain point in their life, like that is Scorpio energy, you know? So with this, this is, these are things that have been present for us. There may have also been some energy surrounding death at this time because Scorpio does represent death as much as it represents rebirth, right? Um, things don't necessarily go to die in Scorpio, they do, but they come back. Whereas um, Pisces, things go to die there and they transcend, which is a little bit different because there is no uh, coming back to form in transcendence, right? Whereas within rebirthing, this is becoming a new. So let's talk a little bit about human design. I don't know if you guys are aware of what that is, um, but it is is basically a system of, we call it divination. They, this man um, named Ra, Yuruhu, I believe that's how you pronounce it. He created this system and he put together the chakra system, the Kabbalah, uh, the I Ching divination system. What else? I'm missing something. Oh, in astrology. <laughs> okay, but it's more based in the astrology aspect of it is more based in the zodiac, right? In the planetary system, like there are no aspects in reference to the astrology portion of it. So it's not really astrology. It's just utilizing parts of it to um, express a circumstance. And uh, when you pull the chart, it shows a body chart and there are certain, there are nine centers with different gates within the centers and in the gates, the gates are represented by the I Ching system, which is one of the very first forms of divination, I Ching. Okay, that's what this is. And also it utilizes the Kabbalah. Um, and within an ex its expression, it um, there is a wheel, right, that you can go online and look at. And each each gate is connected to a certain zodiac sign. Okay, and through this, when the chart is pulled based off of your birth, the planets that are in that sign make up different. Um, how do how do I explain this? they express different forms of life, right? So there's a unconscious side, which is like ancestral. There's a conscious side of what it is that you're living out in this life, okay? But they're both needed, both needing to know. We're not getting all that because this is not a human design reading. Just want to share a little bit. But for, in reference to human design, with this particular moon, it went through gate 28. And gay 28 is in the spleen. And as I'm talking about this, I'm feeling like I should have had some visuals to show you all <laughs> so that um, 
I'm not just saying words, right? But yeah, I'll leave some links down below so that you can go and pull up your own human design chart if you like when you see it. And if it's the first time you've ever seen it, it might be like, whoa, what, <laughs> what the fuck is this kind of thing? But the website I'm going to give you, it offers a breakdown where you can learn everything if you would like to do that. So this particular gate that the new moon was in, the moon was there, the sun is there, Venus is there. This is in gate 28. And gate 28 is in the center of the, the spleen center. So the spleen represents our instincts and our fears. Okay, so this um, this is the force that pushes us to make a decision like in the moment, right? Or this can be the energy that has us... Um, pull back from something that we believe that we should be doing out of fear right and not listening to our instincts and so gate 28 in human design this is the gate of the game player right um and the game player is really all about i wrote some notes and so it is about facing the darkness in life with courage right so working through your fears of death literally Okay, so it is a lot about the transitoriness of power and influence. So this is the way in which it is that you go about in the world and put out and, and be in your power, be in your own personal influence in um, manifesting the reality it is that you want, All right? So this is what was activated. And through this, what it's asking you in gate 28 is to become intimate with your fear, specifically of death, and master working with it consciously. So this particular gate requires a lot of shadow work, right? Because a lot of things, we are provoked within this gate to do a lot of things out of fear of missing out. It's a very FOMO-based gate. All right, so I'm going to hurry up and do this because um, it, it's, I wrote it, I wrote down words for this. So um, out of a fear of dying before, before finding purpose, before fulfilling whatever it is that you want in life, right? So we take risks, we do things that are really kind of um, unnecessary for real, you know, um, in, in this an attempt to dispel the fear. It's not a real fearlessness. And that's the difference. You know, we believe that we're doing something out of, um, I'm just going to take a risk, you know, but it's like, what is your risk based in? Is it based in, I'm taking a risk so I can make this happen? Or am I taking a risk because I might miss out on something, right? And in that, trying to dispel that fear of death, right? Like, I got to do this before I die. It's kind of like that, uh, what do they call that? Like your bucket list, in a sense. So with this energy, this really is asking of us or requiring of us to walk with this fear, right? And um, really learn to be still, learn to be silent, learn to be within so that we can hear what it is that's going on. That's why it requires so much shadow work. That is what shadow work is. It's about seeing what is conflicting within to what it is that you're viewing externally, you know, in, in your life, right? And that is making you feeling defeated in attaining purpose, in attaining fulfillment within your world, right? So in this, the when we are not really connected with that, when we don't put ourselves in that space of wanting to be silent, you know, of, of desiring that stillness and connecting with that stillness, it can create a lot of hopelessness. It can create depression, um, purposelessness, feeling meaningless, like you're not adding anything to the world, to your life, like that nothing really matters, right? But um, I, for one, I have this gate defined in my human design chart. So let me backtrack for a second. In the charts, um, you either have open centers and gates or you have defined centers and gates. So if you have things that are open, this is you're more, more so influenced by the outside world to and, and easily conditioned in these aspects of um, who it is that you are. 
right? Or how it is that you're expressing your energy. So it's important for you to make sure that you take the time it is that you need so that you can hear your own voice, so that you can know what a thing really is for you, All right? So I, I myself have this gate defined and all gates, they connect to other gates within different centers, which create a channel, All right? So for me, for this, the this channel runs from 28 in the spleen to 38 in the root chakra center right which speaks about pressure so i have this particular channel so when people connect with me and if they have this hanging gate of 28 my channel helps reinforce the drive for them to um face their shadows for them to uh come up out of the struggle because that particular channel is considered the struggle right the the gate that it connects to 38 is about fighting. It, it's about purposefully fighting, right? Having a purpose to fight for something meaningful, something that brings support and growth within the world. So um, if you know me, you know that I'm very passionate, very committed to this work, to what I do, to my learning of this for one, for myself, but for others, you know, because it's, a lot about living life and not feeling like that you've got to struggle in order to succeed, you know, and through that, the work has to be done, okay? It's a lot about having to rewrite beliefs, right? You find balance um, in really being able to connect with your own personal beliefs, decondition yourself from the beliefs it is that you hold that put you in this space of fighting just to fight, right? Versus, um, you know, I enjoy this. I'm about to get up. I'm about to do this, you know, like um, living life with a purpose or just feeling happy and joyful about life, you know, and what it is that you're doing and why you're doing it and, and how it is that you're going about it. But in order for that to happen, you have to face the darkness, which is where this moon energy is happening for us, right? Really facing our fears, facing our, our shadows, right? That have us being in this space of doing things out of feeling like that we are not going to accomplish something if we don't do this fear miss now, you know? So with that... This gate is a I Ching, they are, he, are con, called hexagrams, right? That is what the divination is within the I Ching. So each hexagram, all right, is uh, dictated by two trigrams, which is three lines. And each combination of three lines represents an element. All right, so the two elements within this particular um, hexagram here at the top, this is the lake or marsh. It's water though, these two lines. So this is a yang, two yang lines and a yang line. And at the bottom here, we have wind and wood, wind or wood. And this particular I Ching, it speaks about the lake submerges the great tree. All right, so this particular gate in reference to the I Ching is the great exceeding. So this is something big being overcome, right? This is something um, we are beginning to go forth with and so that we can get out of our fears. And great exceeding says the ridge pole warps. The ridge pole. So these cards are based in Chinese everything right so ridge poles are what the chinese use to hold their houses up steadily so within this person specific energy the ridge pole is coming out right because there's no things are no longer withstanding as they are something is being exceeded something is being crossed over okay and it says it's fruitful to have a direction to go in creating success it says, when you exceed something, you cross over a line and make a transition. This brings stress, but also a greatness of spirit and purpose beyond the scope of the situation. 
Things cannot hold up as they are. Like the ridge pole of the traditional Chinese house, so there must be movement. Reach out imaginatively and explore. And it asks, what is overloaded? So what are you doing too much of? What is not working anymore? What have you outgrown? And what must you do? What, what changes are you making? What's dying? What's being reborn? Or more so, what's dying? And how is what has died being? How is it being reborn? What is it being reborn into? And how are you lightening your load? How are you letting go of everything that has um that can possibly drown you in the water right because the lake submerges the great tree this is a strong steady grounded rooted tree right but if the wind come through right this wind communication conversation too many opinions talking to too many people about whatever right whatever it is that you have going on it, it can distort where it is that you're going, how you're going about it, and what it is that you need to do to actually do for yourself, for you. It's up to you to do the shadow work, right? So that you can move those things out of the way and be able to uh, walk with a sense of steadiness, walk not doing things out of like, oh, if I don't do this, then I'm not gonna make it. If I don't do this, then I ain't gonna be able, I'm not gonna experience this, right? without knowing that if you let these things go, you yourself have the ability within to experience what it is that you are trying to experience, whatever that may be. It's all in a matter of um, trust, right? And you getting rid of beliefs that do not serve going about something in a new way, in a certain way, into a way that is being reborn, being rebirthed, that's going to serve you moving forward, right? In a way that is, I don't wanna say effortless, but that's lighter, that's not held back or held down by um, facades or idealisms or dogmas, you know? And you kind of being able to be in this space of, knowing truly who it is that you are and why you're doing what you're doing, you know, and really experiencing that by means of um, oneself, right? And connection to God, to the divine. Okay, y'all. So that was a mouthful. <laughs> but I hope that that made sense. I really hope that um, that resonates with you guys. And if you have any, if you want to talk about that, if you have any questions about, you know, human design, I Ching, and how these things work for you, reach out to me. My email is below. All right. So as far as all of those things, we are going to go ahead and get into this pick card and I'll see you in a bit. Okay. So for this pick a card, here are your choices. So this first deck here is the Tarot of Magical Correspondence. This middle one is the Rider Waite Tarot. And this one here is the Muse Tarot. So go ahead and take a moment, see which one is calling to you, which one maybe your eyes are drawn to, um, what you're feeling, what it maybe one of them triggers some type of feeling within you. Um, or maybe you don't feel any kind of way. <laughs> maybe you're not getting nothing. Just choose one. It don't matter. Okay. There, I'm sure there's something in that for you. The one that you chose. Okay. And you can always listen to the entire video. So if you need to pause that, go ahead and do that. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, so this is for those of you who chose the Tarot of Magical Correspondence. So some those of you who chose this, you know, y'all might be in this space of wanting to get more into the esoteric world of things, right? Really get into that hidden knowledge, that um, occult energy and learning what these things mean, what they are, what they entail, right? Um, maybe you're just ready to see things differently, see why things work the way they work, okay? So if that's the case, 
let's go ahead and see what messages the ancestor has for you at this time. So for spirit, ancestors, guides. Connecting with the higher self of those who chose. How many? What messages do you have for them at this time? What would you like for them to know for this Scorpio eclipse energy, this phase, these transitions? And what messages do you have for them? So there was something I was supposed to say in reference to the I Ching card that's coming up very strongly right now because uh, for the human design, it's in gate 28, but it's line one, right? So with that line one in the I Ching in the 28 hexagram is yin, right? So this may be, um, this is the shadow work, right? Being very still being very calm, being very in a space of in, being internal, right? It's not so active. It's allowing things to come and be received. Here's the power. So working with others, learning with others, growing with others, maybe something for you at this time, very committed to what it is that you are doing, what you're building and who you're connecting with as well. Yeah, and really enjoying this, having a lot of fun, feeling very expansive, um, maybe very much so in your head about it, right? But uh, connecting, but getting out of your head so that you connect with having a good time with what it is that you are doing, you know, because you are on a beginning path of um, building a foundation, a structure that if you have been desiring, it's like you've been attaining and cultivating this sense of wisdom. Maybe you're wanting to be doing that as well. Yeah, this is something new, something very new for you, feeling um newly spirited yeah wow this is really new okay so put that to the side we'll talk about these cards so the first card that came out here is the three of material so this is the um this is the three of pentacles in a traditional deck right so this has a lot to do with uh for me, anything when it comes to threes, it's like the Holy Trinity, mother, father, child, um, uh, God, father, Holy Spirit. Um, what other form does that come in? Mm, I can't think at this time. It's not coming to me. I guess it's the only two that need to be mentioned. But um, this is a lot about stability, foundation, you know, uh, cultivating a sense of understanding and community as well. Perhaps you are seeking to be part of a community. Maybe you have just joined a community um, as well that is allowing you to really build on top of who it is that you are, what it is that you desire, what you want for your life, what you see, what you see, like bringing things into manifestation right? Three of materials. This is very practical, very uh, in reality, you know, and we have the sun card here. Okay. So what's on your mind is joy and bliss and, you know, wanting to build a life, build a reality that is enjoyable, you know, what it is that allows you to thrive a lot about what I was talking about in the first part of the video. If you haven't watched that, maybe you want to go check that out, right? Um, having a reason to wake up in the morning and feeling really good about that, you know, wanting to be up when the sun comes up, right? And seeing this, maybe this has a lot to do with your inner child as well and connecting with this space of innocence. Maybe um, that is what is encouraging you, right? Maybe even your children are encouraging you to build a, create something new, right? Create, uh, cultivate, create, connect with new communities, right? 
this can also be speaking a lot about maybe you're giving some gifts out, handing some things out, uh, come connecting and communicating with people who are perhaps giving you some gifts of wisdom, perhaps that are going to help you bring understanding to what it is that you have been experiencing, right? And how the way that things have been going to help you cultivate your own sense of wisdom by way of what they have to share in reference to their experience. So we have the page of materials here. So this is the beginning. It's like the the thought is here. You have it in your mind, in your intuition, in your mind's eye sees very clearly what it is that it wants, right? That it must grow, that you must become this in order for this to grow, right? There is no, um, nothing is can ever be really tangible or real or created if we are not it, you know, not that granted. And, you know, when in saying that, it's like whatever it is that you're experiencing that you don't want, that you're not happy with, know that if there is some part of you that is that it is reflecting some part of you, something within your mind, something within your understanding, something within your beliefs. Okay. Something within some wisdom that you gain that you thought worked and don't really work kind of thing. So in that you're letting that go so that you can come to this new place, right? This is the ace of inspiration. It's the ace of wands, right? So you are being, again, gifted something. Maybe you're connecting with some new gifts, um, connecting with this oneness of self, this connection to God, this connection to source, the spirit, whoever, however your God is named for you, you know, and um, bringing forth a new cycle in life. I heard the word recollection. Maybe this will be something for you to come back to in the future later of like, oh, I remember how I did that. Oh, I remember when I wanted that and I got it now kind of thing. Um, and this is beginning to come to pass in a sense where when I say come to pass I mean like it's being cultivated it's being created you know you are gaining the inspiration you have that very excited about it okay um I do want to say there may be some things within your subconscious that uh, could possibly harm you going forward out of the fact that you just don't know that they're there right but this gives you the opportunity to work through that work with that okay and after that comes out the full and with the full card this is speaking about being on a new path on a new journey you're on the fool's journey right this is of infinite possibilities however it is that you are seeing perceiving making things up as you go is like you are about to really start putting yourself out there um, and have gaining the experience that you need to gain the understanding um, and the wisdom that's needed for you to come to full fruition, come to completion, right? To what it is that you are desiring to create, called the manifest, those words. Okay, so you know, is ready to just jump off the cosmos. You, It's like you've climbed above whatever it is that has, um, that has not been bringing beauty into your life, into your world and choosing to, in a sense, let the stars guide you is what I guess I want to say. And... The next card we have is five of voices. So this is about conflict, right? This is a lot, of, it's a lot of mental energy here. So you may be going back and forth with yourself about what it is that you're doing, how you're doing this, right? Especially since it's a, a beginning of things, this may bring something up in reference to others, have feeling some kind of way, right? Or thinking more so than anything, having an opinion, a thought, communicating perhaps, um, in reference to how it is that you're choosing to go about or what it is that you want your dreams. This can also just be speaking about you sabotaging yourself, all right, and out of like just needing to make a decision, like, or you could even be being misled 
by not staying pure to what it is that you are, to who it is that you are, okay? Um, Because that will bring a lot of cognitive dissonance when you're really feeling excited about something and but you still have all these empty beliefs stored that do not necessarily serve you in the matter that don't work, you know, that's not going to allow you to really um, make a thing a thing, you know, then this can be that fear coming up. This can um, just simply be like some something old, right? Something from childhood, something you got to go back for, right? Because there's a lot of young, <clears throat> a lot of young energy here, you know, so that may be something for you. There is someone new coming into your life, something, someone who is going to be helping you. It could be more than one person, it could be a group of people. Like I mentioned, community. Um, and that's going to be important for you because if you sometimes we get in that space of feeling like that, we that we're going to do this on our own. And that's where that five of voices, five of voices is five of swords coming up. And but we are needing that support, right? And what it is that another can offer us um, with the trials that we're going to come through. Perhaps that's the energy of the people coming in, sharing their wisdom um, when it comes to what it is that they've experienced, how it is that they've gone about doing things that they do. So I'm going to clarify these cards. Oh, definitely things are might be a lot of communication about your fit your life in general. Um it can be something maybe some of you are moving, uh, and you are having a lot of correspondence in reference to that. Right, because something is like something has to something is ending. So again you know, the new way of things can begin. So um, we might also be feeling like things are moving a little bit slow. And if they are, you may be blinded by too much light in a sense. It's going to require you to really go within and trust. Maybe you need to connect with someone spiritual who can help you. Um, a priest, a pastor, okay, a, a, a breeder, um, you know, someone spiritual, an astrologer even, okay, because uh, whatever hard times it is that has been existing, that have been happening for you, they're coming to an end, right, because the ace, okay, so on top of the three of materials is the eight of wands. These are um, the messages, the movement happening that's taking place. Um, there can be simply, you can be being intuitively or divinely inspired of what it is that you're going to do, how you're going to go about doing that, right? But it's important that you take your time and um, it's like, even though you see the light, see the way, you have the joy, you're really excited. Um, be methodical in your planning, Knight of Coins. Be very sure uh, in any place that you're stubborn of what it is that needs to be thrown into the flames, that is that light is being shed on, that you need to let go of, and you're trying to hold on to it. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not do that. So then you have Ten of Swords here on the page of Materials. And that can, to me, that's what I'm hearing is do not be your own worst enemy. You know, don't, don't psych yourself out as you're at the beginning stages. Let things happen as they are. You know, it's like there, things are this hard time, this, this, these mental spaces that, uh, these beliefs, these ideas, these thoughts that you've been holding on to, they're coming to an end so that you can go forth in, um, that may be in more so even about yourself, Granted, This could have come from experiences that you've had with others in reference to whatever it is that you are on this path toward now, uh, but it, it's coming to an end. And in order to make that happen, it's going to require you 
just doing what it is that's needing to be done because you are inspired here with you have the chariot and the empress right so that is all water energy you know being this open vessel to receive right so that you can magnetize um what it what it is that you desire what you want right um because ace of inspirations is about desires it's fully led on desire right you may need to uh take some of the old and bring that forward with you into whatever new it is that you are attaining because you are on a path of doing things on your own however it is that you are going to be doing this okay and with the fool we have the high priestess so it's like yes go ahead and do what it is um that's needing to be done but recognize uh where it is that you are needing some assistance on this path on this journey ask who you need to ask um connect with your inner self your let your third eye open so that you can see things very clearly along the way as best as you can and where you cannot it's important that you connect with someone who can right this may be an influential woman um there are quite a few influential women here in your world in your life because in five of voices here we have the queen of wands so with the queen of wands this five of voices may be impending on your confidence um this may even be someone's voice in the back of your head kind of thing that is needing to be you know let go of um because you're coming out of this space of stillness coming out of this space of um rest <laughs> in a sense inactivity and things are moving forward because a card that fell out here was the queen of emotions and the queen of emotions that's the queen of cups right so this is being connected with your inner being right that is the feminine aspect of the cups um not that cups aren't already feminine but just being very connected uh to the divine to source to spirit however you know and being above seeing things in black or white right um being very tapped in and, and uh connecting with your intuitive and psychic responses you know before anything and but even with this five of voices and queen of wands there may be someone who can help you um move this thing faster right um someone who may come through and remind you of your purity um you're connecting to yourself even okay and understanding but this can also be like some chaos energy that comes right because the thing about being on a like everything is spiritual right uh so when we start to do stuff on our own how we want to do it uh things that are hidden begin to arise right and they may provoke chaos within our life out of the fact that we just weren't we weren't aware that they were there so the that can be these five of voices and this queen of wands energy creating a little bit of chaos but this can also be um because that five of voices can be drowning out that ability to know that you have the you have you have it basically like you can create this you can receive it. You can be in receiving for what it is that you desire and it will come to you. So it's like uh, really doing what it is that needs to be done to cast those things out. And it may take or it will take this queen of emotions energy to drown that out, to wash it away, to cleanse it away. Right. And if you're into conjure work, uh, spell work that will be supportive of you too the thing about doing spell work is if you're going to do that you still also have to do the work it's in assistance it's not just it's not a snappy fingers and go kind of thing like it's a two-part it you have to meet god halfway basically you know so let me see what other cards i'm gonna pull i'll pull some of those moon cards since we are 
in this own energy. What else is this here? Power. Yeah. Right. So what's coming out here is the fixed moon. Hold your vision. And we, this new moon is a fixed moon, right? So this is about being steadfast, being very sure, being very clear. Like whatever obstacles you come through um, or that are approached with, know that you have or know that you have the support it is that you need in order to make it through, to work through it, to gain, um, to push it out the way in a sense, you know, so that you can move on freely and be able to live your life, okay? And at the bottom, we have a full moon of Aries, a fire climax approaches. So something is definitely about to come about for you. Uh, and it's, you know, that which you've been striving towards but it's going to bring a new um, new form of vision, life, going about things. Okay. That's a lot of cards. We're going to just have to take the one that fell out on top. So we have Sara Lakali, Divine Lineage. And Divine Lineage, Sarah Lakali, she comes to us with a message. <clears throat> and she's in the temple of ancestors and she says your ancestors protect the holy grail and that holy grail is you divine ones walk beside and within you trust your ancestors want to remind you that you are not alone. They are rooting for you. They ask you to honor your spirit guides and call upon the power of the divine. Create or nourish your ancestral altar or shrine and bury your ancestors. Speak their names. Your divine lineage ancestors may be blood related or culturally or spiritually connected. Her declaration says, I am my sister and my sister is me. Okay, so that speaks a lot about and the connections again that you have and them being very supportive of who you are, where you at, where you're going. And for personal power, you have, I am good enough. So you're good enough to make what you want happen, happen. All right, stop resisting being happy. If you do if you do whatever it is that you need to make yourself happy, to be happy, I should say. What makes you happy? Do that. Live that. It's starting to get high. And for self care, we have stretch. So stretching will help you get fluid within your body, which too will. Um, correlate and connect with your entire being, right? And this will also help you release anything that's stagnant within anything where the places are tight, stuff that's gotten lost into your joints, in your muscles, okay? So that you can release that, right? Because a lot of things that we go through, what we experience, it stores itself in our body and our organs and stretching is very detoxing for the entire body okay so make sure you're drinking a lot of water as well all right power one those are your messages i hope that they serve you and bring you some good news all right so i'll talk to you soon bye for now what's up how to so this is for you guys who chose the rider weight deck so for you guys Y'all may be in this space of um, sticking to the tradition of things, um, keeping it very original. And when I say original, I mean in a sense of um, the beginning, right? Where it started from, keeping it true to its uh, where it has been built from, 
I guess is maybe is the right words, but also being in a space where you are um, leaving room for flow to happen, for there to be leeway, you know, um, allowing one thing to happen first and then still doing what needs to be done, right? It's like having this sort of balance that's needed in order for you to um, live your life how you want to live your life. You know, maybe you're a very traditional type of person, okay? Um, and really like things to be uh, the way you say they should be, right? Maybe you have a lot of old beliefs that really work for you, that you enjoy of how you live your life. Um, you could even just really respect the way in which your family has done things and want to continue forward with doing that. Okay, so uh, I want to mention with y'all, one thing I forgot to mention with the I Ching and the Human Design, if you haven't uh, listened to the first half of the video, go back and listen to that. Um, but in the gate, 28, it is a 28.1, which means it is activating line one within the hexagram. So line one in this hexagram is the one at the bottom. This is the yin line. So this is a lot about internal work, internal. A lot of these things are happening internally, right? That's why the shadow work is perhaps very important, right? And whatever it is that's coming up and moving beyond and through that, I'm a strong advocate of shadow work, okay? Like, <laughs> if you only do one know shadow work, it's difficult to grow, all right? So yeah, that's all I want to share. Let's get into this reading, see what messages Spirit has for you at this time. What would you like for how to, to know what messages are they here to receive today? What the life sounds insight instruction perhaps if you're looking for that in going forward in your life and living your life, however they live it. Where is their support at this time? Oh, no. um, Okay, so yeah, um, there is something that is being walked away from when it comes to a relationship, perhaps a just emotions of how it is that you go about feeling. It, it sounds as if like you're leaving behind what's not authentic to you. Okay, and it's interesting. This is an eclipse moon here so this moon has probably been very influential when it comes to your emotional nature you know this is the eight of emotions the eight of cups okay so it's like really moving through those ways that do not necessarily um serve you right it's something that has been heavy it seems you know, this could have to do with your responsibilities and what it is you have to take care of. Maybe you have been seeing them from a perspective that has been dragging you down versus um, feeling good about it, right? Yeah, making up things that aren't necessarily true, seeing stuff through eyes that will never serve you, right? We'll just continue to create um, non-consensible chaos well, all chaos is that, I suppose, right? And finding this space of harmony, of balance, really um, learning to be patient with the process of things, you know, and coming into a realm of uh, seeing the higher purpose and what it is that you're doing, the life it is that you're living and what that means for you, right? Um, and that may put you in this space of feeling like this, you got to defend yourself by some means, right? It, it, it's almost as if you've had a lot of opinions when it comes down to your life and who you are and how you go about living it. Uh, but that is definitely coming to an end and it has no choice but to. Okay, so we have the eight of emotions here. So again, the um, leaving behind, like getting out of this old cycle, this drudgerous 
um, confusion, like uh, just kind of feeling all over the place. Like I want to feel this way, but I feel this way. Why can't I feel this way? What's in the way? What's going on? Right. But something has been eclipsed out of your life. Right. That can no longer um, withstand the truth of you. Right. And who it is that you want and how you're going about that. And then we have the 10 of inspiration. It's the 10 of wands. Right. So this is like laying down the burdens. You know, you've been walking a long time with um, a load that did not necessarily belong to you. Right. Maybe you've been wanting your life to be a certain way and it hasn't been able to out of the fact that there are a lot of other voices, a lot of other opinions that you have been holding on to. Right. That um has been influencing right because the emotions is an influence um influencing how it is that you are choosing to feel about what is your responsibility what is yours to do how you're going to go about doing that granted some of you may just have some responsibilities that don't work that is not for your life okay um it's, it's like, I can't even say necessarily that this is something that is not yours to do, right? Um, but it feels like that you are uh, having assistance in the sense of carrying this load. And by way of that, it's giving you a new perspective, like the pers your perception is changing right because you have nine of voices which is the nine of swords so you've been in this space of having these thoughts that are really um they are like false beliefs for real and maybe that's a lot of what's been maybe that's the burden it is that you've been holding on to holding these false beliefs holding these false ideas um holding these false things within you that you oh, how it is that you think you have, should be going about doing something, taking action, living your life, when in reality, it's just been burdening you. It's burdening you. It's not supporting you um, within the dynamic or the realm of really being able to uh, live your life freely, right? Because there's a lot of restriction here, lots of restriction. Now, the voices also uh, speaks about healing as well, like, because it's like when you, and when you're in that space of nine of voices, there is no other choice but to stop because your mind has become your master, right? You are not um, running the show. These negative, uh, toxic thoughts that you are, perpetuating out into your reality are happening and like these things are manifesting within your world out of the fact that you're holding on to these beliefs so you think they're true you're in the business of believing your thoughts <laughs> it's time to question your thoughts right because that's one thing we don't do we don't we don't question our thoughts we don't question what it is that we're believing in if it's actually true Right. So there may be a conversation that you need to have with yourself and see what that brings. OK, so from there, we have the temperance card, but balance is being cultivated here. Right. And this is bringing you to a higher perspective, a higher way of going, being, doing all of that. Um, this is offering you a sense of freedom, but it's also encouraging you to have the patience that's required um for this change that's taking place right because when you let go of something authentic that's not that when you let go of things that you've been doing for however long when you let go of things that have been burdening you for however long thoughts beliefs that you've been holding on to then you have to go about living a new way thinking a new way doing things a new way you then have to train yourself to no longer go back there because it's not like it, you don't just it don't just go away. Like it's literally a process, you know, and what supports within that process is doing what is healthy for you, right? It's not, granted, sure, whatever, we could be in the space of healing. Healing happens, right? We do have to heal from things. But once we heal, we have to begin with what's healthy for us, right? So the healing that comes from the awakening 
right? Because an awakening in itself is healing. It, it, it shows you the reality of what it is that you haven't been seeing, right? So it seems like you're also waking up to what something really is for you, right? And, and being able to let go of having to always feel like that you need to defend yourself. This is a seven of inspiration here. So, right, because it's like you've had no glimmer, like your hope has been distorted in a sense, like you haven't had any real faith, haven't really been able to connect with this sense of happiness, of bliss. And if you have, it's been fleeting. It's like it comes and then it goes, right? But that is because the structure that things have been built on has to revamp be revamped they have to be rebirthed right so the death has happened how are you rebirthing this what is being born now because we have a tower here and the tower is pluto energy um it's also uranus but this is like a a radical change right a radical change in how you see things a radical change in um how you go about living right in in like just really it, it's like a cleansing a clearing this woman's being struck by lightning okay and if she don't die <laughs> then so much of her is going to be rewired literally you know from the way her nervous system works to the way um she even sees life from here because like getting struck by lightning like that is that that's something okay Yeah, but this is bringing balance and this lightning that's being struck, it's happening, you know, in her crown, on her shoulders and the foundation that is up under her. OK, so whatever your whatever your mind has been rooted in, it's, it's completely releasing itself. It's completely um, it's radically changing. Right. And again, this is by way of you choosing to question. Is this true? Is this real? If so, how do I know this? What proof do I have of this? What are you? Why are you here? What are you doing to serve me? What are you handing me? What are you gifting me being here? Or are you, is it pointless? Is it not? Was it never real in the first place? And maybe at one time it was real. Maybe there was an instance that happened that made it real at one point. <laughs> but a day it just seems like a burden, an experience that happened that it's now time to let go of, okay? And so this seems to have a lot to do with, you know, personal self-worth, who it is that uh, you are, how you go about being in the world for real, right? Because we have five of coins clarifying this eight of emotions, right? So this could even have to do with your finances, you know, and um, getting to the heart of the matter, literally, truly, right? And seeing how your imagination may be making, making up things out of, some old wounds, some old, old wounds, maybe not even yours, okay, right, but it's helping you, it's the connection to the heart, the love of self, right, um, because we are the chariot clarifying the tent of inspiration, okay, so um, maybe also, maybe your attitude has been something that's been the burden, all right. Uh, and again, this just feels old. It feels like something that once was that is no longer. Okay. So um, the emperor is clarifying the nine of voices. Okay. And with that, uh, maybe there is, maybe there's a man um, in your life who has that kind of talk. Right. Um seeing everything negatively, things not necessarily going um, 
that feeling like they're not going to go right before they go right, <laughs> you know, before they have a chance to go right. This can even just uh, be you feeling some kind of way about your structure, your your stability. That's not true. Right. The rules and, and laws that you choose to live in your life. And this can be this seems to be based off of old traditions, old uh, things that don't serve anymore. Right. And it's just burdening you. So. Again, like I said, it's about two. Y'all probably really appreciate tradition and things. And you may be a person who feel like you don't care about it, but you actually value it a lot. And out of that value, you're finding a hard time to really come up out of it, out of not recognizing that you actually value it, right? And But it's not your value. It's not your principle. <laughs> okay. And with the temperance, we have the seven of coins clarifying that. So, you know, um, it's the patience, it's the coming to balance, it's the moderation, it is the communication with the with the self and the divine, right? That's gonna that's needing to be nourished, right? That's what's needing to be fed. Okay, that is um the truth, even. The faith, the belief, right? Needing to really cultivate that. And this is a cult in hidden knowledge, right? So this is seeing the truth of the matter, what it is, how this is the way it is, and where did this begin? And possibly who was involved. That may not matter, but maybe that is a thing. Okay. So that you can truly see the beauty of um what it is that you yourself can cultivate and create beyond what was right what no longer serves you is it's very possible to honor and respect the past without living it out right it's like yes your ancestors y'all similar in some ways but there are ways in you that are different how you in there and perhaps those similarities those might not even be working for you kind of thing so things to question but justice is being had here with the seven of wands is like coming out of the space of always feeling like you got to defend yourself right faithful intelligence all right um coming into balance uh finding the order it is that's needing and that's by standing 10 toes down for real can being consistent with yourself consistent with what it is that uh, you want to do right what you're inspired to what are your dreams what are your desires okay and it's like this process is putting you in a place to be able to really be like, this is what I'm going to do. And that's it. Okay. And the tower is bringing you to this new space of self-awareness. We have the four of cups clarifying the tower. Why don't I put that like that? Okay. So this is coming out of a space of, of um, stagnation when it comes to your ability to connect right with yourself right with the love of yourself with the love of others even um this may even have to do with some changes happening around the home okay uh, with your family with women in your family this may even have to do something in reference to women in your family and how they thought and you know what they valued and everything like that and it's just like i don't know I can't even say maybe I work for them because it may not have. OK, only, you know, that <laughs> by what it is that you witnessed. OK, and that's interesting witness that I talked about that each thing um, is like what is overloaded, what has ran its course now, what must be done. OK, it is a letting go of what it is that is not working. All right. So. Let's see. What other messages do we have for how to? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, yeah. Full moon in Capricorn, the end of a tough cycle approaches. Okay, so. At the bottom, we have a mutable moon. Nothing is yet set in stone. So things are still changing. Things are still, you know, still like go with the flow, but make sure that you're willing to put in whatever work in that's necessary. Um, you know, be being disciplined with your the way that you need to do things for yourself, right? This new way of 
being this new way of going about whatever it is that hasn't been working, right? And being consistent with that because it's helping things come to an end. Just keep, keep, keep going, right? Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. And they see the things maybe manifesting within Capricorn season, like fully, like you'll probably start seeing things up until then. But at this uh, Cancer Moon, what would that be? That's in January 2023. I think it's going to be a fairly pleasant year. Not that it won't be stuff going on, you know? There's always stuff going on, but better, different. So we have a bold number here, and she speaks about harvest. So things, again, coming to fruition. All right. You what you what you is what you are seeking is seeking you. All right. And she's in the temple of the high priestess. So with that, this is like you really need to trust yourself, you know, do that inner subconscious work, that shadow work. <laughs> and she says, give thanks. You are being blessed. It's harvest time. Now pay attention. A season of great harvest is a season of great epiphanies. You are prospering. Harvest is when you reap the blessings that you have sown the harvest is not just fulfillment of your dreams but the creation of them your thoughts your imagination the blessing of you being here another day on this earth that is all harvest what seeds of generosity love support and goodwill can you show your community to create a bountiful harvest for all and the de the declaration says we are always prospering okay so we have harvest plus this full moon in capricorn so Things are definitely coming about like something that's going to be long lasting. All right. It's, I mean, I can't say forever, but it's definitely taking place. And so we have I am a creator and I am open to receive in the personal power card. So know that. You know, be open to those messages and know that you are playing a part, playing a hand in what it is that's being drawn out into your reality. You know, also um, stay open. All of this is helping you be in this space of opening, right? So because harvesting is about receiving, right? This is about what has been invested into, what has been nourished which is this temperance energy, right? Which is Sagittarius and Jupiterian energy. So this is, you know, good fortune. It looked like luck on the outside, but it's like, wait, wait no, I took care of this. I did this. Okay, what's the self card? Self care here. A movie. Enjoy a little life, have a little fun. Maybe watch something funny. I don't know. Or maybe something that you like and Get some pampering done. Maybe you want to do that with a friend. All right. Or maybe you're inspired to do something. Okay. But what I know is that you are um, conquering those emotional states and natures that um, just don't work anymore. Right. That come and go, but exist. You know, so pal too, I hope that message blesses you. Uh, I hope it supports you. Okay, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, pal three. So, oh, wow. <laughs> this is for those who chose the Muse Tarot. So there's an interesting story behind this deck for me. So I wanted to buy these, like, I don't know, sometime last year. And I didn't out of the fact that this um, group I used to be part of, the one we used to call her, her muses, but I was out of that group and um, it, it, I didn't leave with a, it wasn't a positive let, let go kind of thing. Um, it wasn't negative either because I learned a lot, but it wasn't, it was a lot involved. But I finally went ahead and bought them and when I bought them, I had excitement in buying them. It wasn't, I didn't, I, that thought, I did think about the reason why I didn't purchase them before, but I didn't have that feeling anymore, right? Because regardless of the fact of 
where the idea of the muse came from, the reason I wanted to purchase these cards was because of the way they help um, me connect with my clairvoyance, with my eye, right, with my sight. Right, because it's mainly a lot of pictures. It's not um, like there's a booklet with it, but the pictures in the deck, they trigger so much. It's a very intuitive deck. Right. That's why I wanted to purchase it. So with all that being said, you guys who chose um, the Muse Tarot, you may be in a space of really desiring to connect with your inner world. Right. Really. Um, you, it's like you may be feeling very hungry for it in a sense, like something that you're really desiring. It's, it's deep within your heart, right? Wanting to um, be inspired by yourself because that's what the muse within this deck is a representation of the muse within you that's inspiring you to do what it is that you're doing or living your life however you're going to live it. Okay, so... Yeah, let's go ahead and see what messages it is that your guys' spirit has for you at this time. What does power go to know? What guidance or what advice that you would you like for them to have at this time in the spirit? Okay. So there may be, um, well, you may be feeling pulled in multiple directions, right? About the way in which you want to go about tackling life, right? Some something, some enterprise, some way of living. Um, how you want to present yourself, even how you want to be seen, perhaps. And there could be some changes in reference to that. Yeah. And through that, this is um, bringing a lot of confidence for you, a lot of uh, manifestation of you choosing yourself. Okay. Like having this strength in being you. Yeah. And in this, really being able to celebrate, like finding balance. Um, whether that's in your life, within your world, within your work, within your relationships. Okay, yeah. And really knowing what you want and going forward, going after having the understanding. It's like uh, you are doing all of this because you get it. I don't know what you get, but you get it. You get what it is that needs to be done, what you want to have, what... Um, like who you want to be. Like maybe you had even been in this space of uh, that you weren't sure that you were good enough, that you had what it is that you needed, um, that you were able to inspire yourself. Okay, Because the first card that came out was five of inspiration. So this is the five of wands. Again, this can be conflict. Um, this can be you wanting to, this is you going out, doing things in your own way, right? Um, choosing to reflect your own understanding, your own ideas, right? Um, and that may have been a little uh, clouded in a sense, right? Out of, this could have brought conflict or it could be a sense of conflict that has been coming from all the other places that you have treaded, where you have been, you know, what you've been doing, how you've been going about that, uh, and your confidence in being able to do that, right? And that, in a sense, blocking this non of material. But what I'm getting is that you understand now, you get it. You get it, so you, you get this, right? You... Um, It's like your ability to thrive is here. Uh, you have connected to that or are connecting to this. All right, something has been washed away and it's like the dirty laundry has been, been 
put away. It has been cleaned. Or maybe it's like it's even been donated. Perhaps you gave it to somebody else. I don't know. I don't think so. I think you, you threw it in the fire. Okay. But we have two of material following this um, nine of material materials. So with this, this is, you know, making a decision about the door it is that you're walking through, right? How you're going to live, what you value, right? Where your time, what is worth your time? What is worth your energy, right? Making, I don't want to say making sense of, but kind of uh, releasing the confusion that comes with many choices, many options. You may all of a sudden receive many options, many choices from people. Um, it may like feel like an infinite swarm of things blossoming for you, right? That and it's feeling very loving. Like even your mind, it seems to be very clear uh, with this energy because here we have the muse of inspiration. And in this deck, the muses are the kings. So this is the queen of wands, all right? You are finding success. You are feeling confident. All right. You are, you know, you can do what you can do. It's like, you know who you are. Nobody can tell you anything. Um, and if they do try and tell you something, you'll probably throw a fireball at them. This woman has a ball of fire in her hand. Two sides of her looking down at the path, ready for whoever going to walk down next to her, under her ain't gonna be on something all right <laughs> this is the full moon here behind her as well so she also has these phoenix wings so there's a, a rebirth that's taking place and that rebirth is happening within your confidence okay because that lack thereof has died this is the death card all right so there has been a uh, pivotal transformation that has taken place for you in your life all right. Um, it's like you have broken free from some web. Um, because it's very interesting that I told that story about those cards. I wasn't going to share that. But when I picked it up, I looked at it and I was like, oh, well, maybe I need to share this story about these cards kind of thing. So maybe you have broken out of this mental web here. Right. And really rebirth yourself, come out of coming out of your cocoon, really, and being able to see with your eyes closed, being able to see in the dark. This is Scorpio energy. OK, you you recognize and understand what things are. <laughs> you get it. And it's leading you true. It's, it's you're answering the call. You're moving forward. This is awakening, which is the judgment card. OK, so. Like justice has been had, you know, you seen things for what it is that, that they truly are. You have um, cultivated your sense of self-worth. You have cut out whatever it is that has not been worth your, your time, right? Because these two materials cards, like that's time energy, you know, and the two of materials is about balancing of a thing. You know, a lot of people say it's like work-life balance. To me, in this card in particular, I'm getting head and heart balance, you know, and focusing on what it is that you're going to stand on with who it is that you are, right? Not It's not about what you're doing. It's about who you are within, for real. And because you see this light is radiating, from out of her i mean you can say that it's coming into her but from it beginning small here in radiating outwardly i feel like to me for me maybe you may get something else looking at this card but i feel like it's radiating from without her and it's meeting god because in the traditional tarot deck the judgment card it's an angel sounding the horn for uh, a mother, father, and a child to come back from the dead, right? So 
that's speaking a lot about, um, you know, that masculine, feminine, and inner child energy showing up and ready to move forward within oneself. Okay, but here I'm getting a strong connection to the oneness of being, to the oneness of the all, you know, being able to connect on a wide spectrum. So let's clarify these cards. What are the messages? What can you clarify these cards, please? That death card, I see a wolf. Wow. So wolves are very intelligent. They're very protective, very nurtured. Right? They're very loyal to um when two wolves get together, they stay together forever. Right. So this I'm getting you being very committed to yourself, but also very committed to your relationships, whether this is you know, platonic or romantic. Um, and this is happening because you value yourself now. You see your worth. This is here. It's like you, you really know. I keep hearing like, can't nobody tell me shit. <laughs> I don't know. Can't nobody tell you shit. Not if you don't let them. Play around these cards, please. Not feisty. Yeah. Success in overcoming the conflict. Wow. <laughs> no, really. Y'all yeah, really like, can't nobody tell me shit. Wow. What else is there? Um, oh, finding success in um, seeing the light in you in oneself, okay, and finding that success, like the confidence, you got Queen of Wands here twice, okay, so it's like you, wow, okay, pal three, I love my spring, so let's see. For the five of wands, we have the four of wands um, uh, clarifying that. So with that, you know, this is you really loving yourself, right? Having, doing things your way, how you want to, like what it is that you're desiring for yourself, for your life, for your world, whatever that is, you're doing that and you're being very firm and steadfast within that, like, no one can change your mind because you're very sure of it. And if they do try and change your mind, you will probably light them up, okay? Because nine of materials is clarified by the queen of wands. Like, you're just not having it. You see her? She's swirling around in this dress like, yes. Okay, with all these flowers, these flowers in her solar plexus, you know? So what is budding from her is beauty, she sees herself for who it, who she is, her her strength, her groundedness, her ability, her capability, her love, her genuineness, her compassion, you know, um, and and just being unmovable, right? Ruling from that space, okay. And two of materials represents clarified, not represents by uh, it's being clarified by the princess of wands, all right. So. And this is you being steadfast on forward to where you are going by way of this head and heart energy. Um, I'm getting there could be a little confusion in reference to what it is that you want to do and how you want to go about it. So with that, I do encourage you to take a moment to sit still, right? Connect with your mind's eye. What is your vision? All right. Connect with your inner vision. All right, and, and see what it is. And maybe you do many things and you're needing to bring those all together into one cohesive type of thing, right? Maybe a lot of things excite you. It's meant to all be brought together. And the muse of inspiration is being clarified by the five points. So again, the coming up off of... um 
these old ways of feeling about yourself, right? Of if, if it, even if it doesn't have to do like, like having these thoughts, these invaluable thoughts of oneself, they are gone, you know, because in here, the 10 of coins is clarifying the death card. Okay. And with that, this is like a, a transformation in this may be happening like within your life, like within your home, within your finances, even within your routines to probably starting to do things a little bit differently, um, getting a little bit more clear about how you're going about all of this. All right. But finding success within that as well is like making the sacrifice to let something go is bringing in more than I think you expected or what you didn't see possible before. And then justice is clarifying the judgment card, which is interesting because justice is the judgment and justice are the counterpart to one another. Right. So you are exemplifying both. It's like balance. For real, exemplifying both aspects, two sides of one coin, you're being both of that, right? And it's interesting because this is coming out underneath the two of materials, which is usually a person juggling two coins, right? So you are in this space of being two faces of a coin. You are the head and the tail. <laughs> you are your higher and your lower self, okay? You are the spiritual and the mundane, all right? You, it's like you know how to, um, you're probably one of those people who can talk to anybody, be in a room of anybody, right? And um, without any type of judgment, you may have the ability to be able to support others in bringing that judgment, that justice to their own life so that they can heal, so that they can um, make sense of things, if sense is what they need of what they've been experiencing, but more so than anything, helping other people connect with their own sense of confidence and oneness, beingness or whatever of self. Is there something on my shirt? No, it's just folded. So let's see, what other messages do we have here? Um, it's definitely, and you may be, right, maybe teaching, maybe you're a teacher, maybe starting something new, learning something new. This may not come, it could come through reading, it could just come through communication or listening to something. Mm. I'm hearing something about health. Like if there has been anything in reference to your health, um, justice is coming about. Yeah, you got the same as uh, Pile 2. Maybe you want to watch Pile 2 as well. Uh, you have full moon in Capricorn. The end of a full of a tough cycle approaches. So, and then at the bottom, we have have faith in your dreams, which is a waxing crescent moon. And the waxing crescent moon is coming up very, very soon. Um, so there may be something that is going to be coming up around that time that is going to further push you into releasing um, this old cycle that you have been under. What is this? You got the same card again as pile two, harvest. Yeah, definitely go watch pile two, pile three. I'm going to pull one more card though on that. Yeah, because it's time to take off the mask, right? And if there's anyone, so if you've been wearing a mask, right? Sometimes we need to wear a mask, right? For certain things like um, you're talking to somebody on the phone and you put your voice on kind of thing, that's a mask, right? It's necessary, but if you're going through life and living your life wearing masks, um, it's time to take that off, like especially if it's around people who are close to you around you and if someone around you has been wearing a mask maybe you want to say hey I see you 
not in a condescending tone, but I see you, it's, it's cool, you're safe. And, but if you feel like it's on some malicious something, then, then just walk away from it. But it doesn't feel that way, okay? Um, whatever illusions that have been taking place in the way that you've been showing up in your life for yourself around others, it's the ending of that that's bringing this cycle to an end, that is bringing this harvest into full fruition. Because at the bottom here, we have Yasigi, and she speaks about living out loud, okay? So say what you gotta say. Do what you gotta do. Speak your truth. Tell your story if that's what you need as well. What else what's here? Personal power for Kyle three. I am knowledge. Okay. So you know some things. <laughs> you know some things. Use that to your advantage. Okay. You may be harvesting some new information. This can be some new information about yourself. All right. Um, this may even just be learning some things about how things work i don't know in what department all right but how things work how the subconscious minds work subconscious mind works in when it comes to the manifestation of your reality and how sometimes it can show up and force you to be in a expression that's not you because you it's time to follow your heart, okay? The Libra energy. We have Libra in your tarot, too. So, what is the self care for Pile 3? Self care for the Pile 3. Okay. We got two cards Ritual and Visualize. So, if you are into rituals, get that started, get that going, write you a petition, all right, pull you some cards, see what it is that you are petitioning for, or the details that you are needing to um, add to your petition, so that you can be very clear when it comes to whoever you're connecting with when you do this ritual, all right, because um yeah maybe you need a moon ritual all right getting you some sage or this can be just getting up in the morning um cleansing your energy cleansing your space maybe you want to do that before you go to bed right and taking a break uh getting rid of all the energy up on you right And then visualize. And perhaps the ritual is visualization. Maybe that is it. Maybe you want to use some candlelight in visualization, right? And doing this um, consistently for a while. Like you can even still uh, write a petition. So you could light a candle. You could write a petition, light a candle. All right. Read that petition out loud. And then you can sit with that candle and visualize what you wrote in that petition come into reality, right? And you can let that handle burn all the way through. Like set you up a little little baby altar, or if you got an altar, use that. However, but you know, you already know what it is that you need to do and how to go about it. Um, you understand the workings of ritual and visualization. It's all in a matter of you doing this. This is something, and this might be part of your life, your path, your sense of wholeness, right? You really being connected to that oneness of, of all. <laughs> this may be the emanation of your being, right? That may just be part of you. Um, you don't have to hide that. It's safe for you to be you, for you to do you. All right, pile three. 
So I hope that this message blesses you. All right. I hope you have a wonderful eclipse cycle. I hope that you are feeling good. And yes, I will see you guys soon. Um, yeah, I hope this blesses you. I think I said that already. Um, all right, y'all. Y'all have a wonderful morning, noon, evening, night, whenever you're watching this. And I will see you soon. Bye for now.